Welcome. Thank you for joining me as I continue my deliverance series. And tonight I'm going to speak about breaking curses, whether they be generational curses or curses that have come in through sin. And those who don't repent open doors to the enemy and he comes in like a flood. But when that happens, it's time for us to turn from wickedness and repent that we might get right with God and break the curses that have been released over our lives. You see, there's an option that you have to have blessings released over your life and your family or to have curses released over them by by sinning, by living in wickedness, and by turning away from the ways of the Lord. So let's begin to pray. I believe you're going to receive blessing tonight. I believe that you're going to, to receive uh, the ways to break these bondages, burdens, and curses off of your life to get to a greater level of freedom and promotion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this message that you've placed upon my heart, Lord. Thank you for your teachings. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. May your spirit speak through me. May I not speak my words, but yours, Holy Spirit, your words, Jesus. Tonight, Lord God, draw those who might watch this, who might watch this and receive freedom and deliverance to this live feed, to this message, wherever it's posted that they may receive freedom and promotion, that they may rise up to the next level, whether it be financially, whether it be spiritually, whether it be to receive a healing by having these curses broken off of their lives and their bloodline. Lord, I ask that you draw them, that they would receive wholeness through this and that they would receive freedom as they walk in your spirit, as they break out of this cycle that they've been walking in. I ask you, Lord, I ask you these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So curses aren't something that are talked about much in modern day church or in the modern day church in America. And that's because there's a mentality that all these curses are broken in the moment that we are saved. And I've seen it happen both ways. I'm going to repeat this later, but I've seen it happen both ways, whereas people are saved and they seem to be delivered from every curse and every bondage and every devil in the moment of salvation. But I've also seen it where a portion of those believers continue to be oppressed, continue to suffer under a generational curse or some kind of curse that they've allowed into their lives. And we're going to talk about how how to deal with that tonight. So you may ask the question, why doesn't everyone become completely free when they get saved? And the truth is only God knows why these curses continue to affect a portion of believers. The good news is I'm going to teach you how to get free tonight so you can live out your divine destiny in Christ. And I want to see you live out that full potential that God has for you. There's a purpose for your life, and there's so many living uh, a life of hopelessness. They feel hopeless from the start, and I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to tell you because God word, God's word has told me, God has spoken to me that there's a purpose for your life, that there's a plan for your life, that God has a beautiful life ahead of you if you would only give your life over to him if you would only place your life in his hands he can show you a different way a way that will just blow your mind it's just unbelievable i want you to know that that he can change everything and he can change your perspective so deuteronomy let's let's open up to deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. That's the first scripture we're going to read from tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Thank you for your word. And it says this, However, if you don't obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. So God is clear according to his word that we are to obey him by following his commands. Every time we sin by not following one of his commands, we open ourselves up to curses and demonic influence. And I know many people that will say to me, Alex, that's Old Testament. You know, and I, I once had that perspective as well. That's Old Testament. You know, following God's commands and curses coming on believers, curses coming on the people of God, that doesn't apply to today, but actually it does. Because there is 
a set of commandments that we live by today, some from the Old Testament that still apply to us, the moral code of the Old Testament, the moral laws of the Old Testament, and also the commandments given to us by Jesus himself, they still apply. And if we don't live by them, but we live in a way of wickedness and sinfulness, those curses that God has talked about in the Old Testament still will apply to us and be released into our lives and families. And we don't want that to happen. But if it has happened, I'm going to show you the way to break out of that tonight, to break those things off of you, off of your bloodline and off of your ministry and business and wherever they may have been released. So the way we stay free from curses and demonic oppression is by staying clean before God. You have to keep your account short with God, which means if you sin, quickly repent. Quickly repent. Do not allow time to pass where the door can be open, where the gate can be open to the enemy that he may come and prowl and lurk in and find an entry point. So if we don't confess our sins and repent the, repent, the curses released over our lives can eventually cause sickness, injury, infertility, demonization, and even death. Worst of all, you could end up living your eternity out in a place called hell. And I don't say that to scare you. I don't say that to cause fear in you. We should fear one one being, and that is God. We shouldn't fear man. We shouldn't fear hell. But the fear of God is the fact that we don't want to live without him. We don't want to live without the presence of God. And living in hell is living without the presence of God. It's a place of torment. It's a place of pain that never ends. And that's the worst thing that could happen by a curse being enforced upon your life. Yes, it will cause torment in this life and in the next. Hell never ends. This life ends, hell doesn't. That's what some people don't seem to understand. That there's a way to escape this life, but there's not a way to escape an eternity without God if you end up there. Fortunately, God has mercy on, on all of us on this world. He sent his one and only son to die for us. And he took the penalty of our sins, that we wouldn't have to suffer for them, that we wouldn't have to go under that kind of oppression and that kind of pain and that kind of torment that Jesus has suffered through, but we can receive freedom. We can receive forgiveness by placing our faith in the Son of God, Jesus Christ. So unfortunately, when we suffer for sin, when we suffer under these curses and bondages, it doesn't stop there. Unfortunately, it carries on to the third and fourth generation, according to Scripture, that our children and our children's children can suffer from these curses as well if they're not dealt with, if they're not broken off of our lives. Our blessings can be generational, and so can our curses. So Deuteronomy 5, chapter 5, verses 9 and 10, let's turn there for a moment. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your word, Lord. It says this. These scriptures say this. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. So you can see from these verses that God would rather show mercy, but for those who refuse to repent and obey him, they can only expect to be cursed because of their rebellion. You can usually see the signs of a generational curse manifesting themselves as a youth. You can see young people falling into rebellion, drinking alcohol, starting fistfights, or being involved in fistfights, and all these things. These are the way that we begin to see a curse and demonic influence manifest themselves in the life of a youth, of a young person. There are common temptations like being pressured to smoke a cigarette, drink a beer, or become sexually active before marriage. But the signs of a generational curse are different because of demonic influence. Demonic influence causes a lack of control. In those it affects, this influence creates a pull towards specific sins and fleshly desires. These specific sins and fleshly desires being the sins and desires of their forefathers. 
I hope you're following me. I've seen this happen with addiction, alcoholism, pornography, and many other areas of weakness in those under demonic influence. The way to identify the curse that's being enforced is to ask for God's help in recognizing those areas of weakness. So even people who are Christians, even people who identify as spirit-filled Christians can struggle with these weaknesses and tendencies brought on or passed down as a curse. So whether you open the door to Satan by sinning and bringing curses upon your own life or under curses from previous generations, you need to get free. You need to break free from these things. If you're going to prosper, if you're going to see your family, your ministry, or your business prosper, you need to break free from these curses. And God wants to give you the way out. He wants to point you in the direction of freedom. And that's what we're doing tonight. So let me ask you a question. Is there a specific sin that continues to plague you again and again? Is it a vicious cycle where every time you feel like you've risen above this sin, you've overcome that obstacle, you've risen up to the next level and had victory over that sin, you fall right back into it. And it's almost like uh, you weren't even tempted. You just automatically went back into that default mode where you fell back into the sin. And it's just been this endless cycle. Well, if that's the case, then it very well could be a curse or generational curse that's been released upon your life because of sin or sin of a forefather. Or, you know, here's another question. Is there an area of your life where you see yourself prospering, where you see yourself ready to to get to the next level, whether it be a promotion at your job, whether it be a better apartment or house, whether it be um, just another area where you can see yourself kind of moving forward, but then all of a sudden you take a step back. You lose something. You lose property. You lose money. You lose a, an opportunity. You know, that could be another way where you can see a generational curse being enforced on your life to where you're hitting a lid, you're hitting a roof, you're hitting this, this thing where you just cannot seem to rise above and out of it. If you're in that place, I also want to pray for you in just a moment where we will go through and repent and renounce together to where you can receive that freedom and climb up to the next level. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Well, I want to tell you that I'm living proof that God can break curses and generational curses off of your life. I was drawn to alcohol, drugs, fist fights, and all those things fornication and all those things I was talking about earlier, those temptations, and I was drawn to them, not just in a natural way, but in a, in a demonic way where I didn't have control over what I was doing fully. But I was drawn, there was this strong pull and tendency, these desires of my flesh were stronger than the average. And as I was drawn and I fell into sin, there was bondages and burdens as I fell into them again and again, there was a lot of back and forth. And as I tried to do the right thing, I was pulled back in. And yes, some of those things were my decisions. And I made a decision to submit to that urge, to those urges and those temptations. But then eventually I made the decision to submit my life to Jesus Christ and ask the Holy Spirit to give me the power to overcome and for so many years of my life, that's what I was missing. I was missing the Holy Spirit. I had given my life to Christ, but I didn't ask the Holy Spirit to fill me. And I tell you, if you're living the Christian life and you say, I don't need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you don't know what you're missing. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't know what to do without speaking in tongues, without having my prayer language, without going to war in the spirit with the enemy and claiming the victory in Jesus, without being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit that allows me to overcome, that releases to me divine wisdom, that releases to me divine supernatural strength, that releases to me this prayer language. You know, it, and tongues is your own personal prayer language. There's different manifestations, different manifestations of tongues. One's a prayer language. One's a deliverance kind of language. And then there's messages that can be given in tongues before a body, before the body of Christ, whether it be in a church or, or in a ministry. And then there should be an interpretation with that. But what I'm saying is you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit if you're going to overcome the wiles of the enemy the plans of the enemy, 
the victory against the enemy has already been won when Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood. He made an open shame, an open spectacle of the enemy and his devils. So we have already overcome. We need to claim that victory. We need to know our authority over the enemy. And that's first and foremost. We need to know that we're the children of God. So I was full of anger and rage. I became addicted to drugs and did many things that I now regret. But when I repented of those things and renounced those things, I received a freedom that I had never known. You know, it's like all of my life, and it, this is just this is just a uh, an example or a way of describing it to you. It's like I used to see in black and white, and then all of a sudden I saw in color. You know, and uh, I remember being born again, and the next day looking out the window, and the grass seemed greener. All the sounds from the birds seemed louder. It was like I had never lived until that moment, and that's what God wants to do for you right now. So as I lead you in prayer. Say these words with me, and it matters. It does matter what you say, what you speak. It matters. It's important uh, what you speak with your words, with your mouth, but it matters more that you believe them in your heart. So say these prayers with me. Say this prayer with me. Renounce these things with me, but believe them in your heart as you're saying them. So follow with me in this prayer and in this renouncing and repentance. Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, I believe Jesus rose from the grave and that he is Lord forevermore. Lord, wash me, cleanse me, and purify me with your precious blood. I renounce every act of evil, every sinful act that I've been involved with whether it be witchcraft, whether it be alcohol, whether it be drug use, whether it be fornication or adultery, and just begin to renounce everything that comes to mind, anything that you can think of that you've been involved in that's against God, that is sinful, and just begin to watch those curses break off of your life. Lord, we renounce every sinful act in Jesus' name. And if we forget one, we just believe that you're going to bring it to our remembrance right now by the Holy Spirit, or you're going to bring it to our remembrance later on today or tonight or tomorrow morning. And as we renounce these things, as we renounce them and let them go, you're bringing freedom into our lives. You're breaking every stronghold right now in Jesus' name. I rebuke you, devils, any devil that's holding on, any generational curse or curse that has been let in through sin. I break your back right now in Jesus' name. I break your power, devils. I break every demonic spirit's power in Jesus' name off of myself, off of every person that's watching, off of every family and business that's been inflicted and afflicted with curses, with demonic influence in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I declare and decree that you will go free right now from this day forward in the mighty name of Jesus and by the power of his precious blood in Jesus name. Amen. I just believe right now that you're beginning to walk in freedom, that you feel the glory of God, that you sense the presence of God just flooding in to wherever you are right now, whatever room, car, apartment, house, or wherever you are, that the glory of God, that the presence of God is flooding in and filling every broken part, you're, uh, you're beginning to just sense him, at, sense the Lord as he comes in to, to uh, strengthen you in those weak places, to give you a leading into the spirit rather than a leading into temptation and fleshly desires. Sito ramba bashanto, kamba samba bo yondo rambashi, kito rambashi bo sondo rambasa, kaba sanda rabashino rambo, kamba sabashindo rambaba. Hallelujah. Lord, deliver where deliverance is needed. Heal where healing is needed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Draw those who don't know you unto yourself in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you next week on my next live broadcast. Keep your eyes to the skies and your hands to the plow. God bless you.